What's hey, up, bud. Jaso? How you doing? Doing good. How you doing, man? Uh, doing awesome. I'm excited about today. I am too. We finally get to reveal the 10 steps to success. <laughs> With a couple bonus, right? Hey, come on. You're killing us, man. We weren't even going to tell them about the bonus till the bonus. All right. The seven of you who are on, <laughs> there might, there may or may not be a couple bonus. <laughs> You never want to promise 12 steps and then only give 10. It's yeah. really better to just promise 10 and give 12. Under promise over deliver. You know what I meant to do was uh, find the video clip of, I can't even remember the movie right now, but where the volume goes up to 11. You know what I'm talking about? Like in the 80s or 90s. Was Christian Slater in it? <laughs> if Christian Slater wasn't in the movie, then I have no idea what you're talking about. I feel like he's in every movie, just a little cameo here and there. In the, in the 80s. In the 80s, I yeah. think he was. Hey, so I think I told you, um, we're gonna. I'm also going to just broadcast this on uh, Turfs Up Radio. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. So we got a few more minutes till we get started. If it's okay, what I'll do is I'll just, I get, what I got to do is I got to just turn that on and do like a quick introduction of why they're not listening to music now. And then we, <laughs> then we can get rolling. <laughs> Yeah, I want to hear this. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not, I'm just, you're going to hear it. It's just going to be me saying why we're, why we're interrupting their normal music session, you know? It gives me I still want to, I still want to hear the, the infringement um, explanation from the other day. Yeah, well, I, I guess, you know, I, I guess I learned that I can't get play music unless I go pay big bucks for, on Turfs Up Radio, we have all the licenses, so I can play whatever I want, but I was live, I was streaming live to Facebook and to YouTube, and they both shut me down, not shut me down, but they blocked my stuff because of a music copyright infringement, so now I got to go get generic royalty-free music, and I didn't play that much, I did some ACDC and some Weezer, which I liked got me pumped up and can, can we do that during this webinar should we should we have people request songs that we could do that yeah <laughs> i never really thought about it we're really stepping out of the box now I know. anyone wants to pop in the chat and request a song i mean there's a 99.9 percent .9 chance it won't get played um but that 0.01 percent chance that you may strike gold yeah we're, we're doing song requests now the thing is, I think it'll be fine as long as I just don't, because I'm not going to stream live and into Facebook or YouTube. I'm just going to be on the radio, so we can do whatever we want. I like it. I like that. I like it. With with uh, so many restrictions nowadays, isn't it? Isn't it great to, to <laughs> be able to just have that American freedom? Yeah, I guess. I did, by the way, I didn't realize that how locked down uh, Colorado was. I, f I just found out Colorado is le like a 20%. I was thinking that uh, Colorado is going to be wide open. Um, what do, what do we have here open? from Colorado? Who's, 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 who's on the panel? Who's, who's participating from Colorado? There's got to be somebody. I mean, I went there sometime in February and skied, and it was just kind of like, you know, masks and stuff. But you, you, they still had restaurants you could go to. Wasn't twenty percent capped where you were? No. I heard the snow was good though. What's what's Fitz saying? Yeah, dude. Ex native. That's what I heard, man. I heard it's locked. Well, you guys are in Florida, so pretty much uh, everything's locked down. Compared <laughs> to Florida and Texas. Exactly. Hey Jeff. <laughs> he knows Jeff and Fitz. They know. Yeah. Florida's awesome. Florida is awesome. Why don't we plan a trip right now to everyone well, go to Florida? It's got to be right now because nobody wants to come, uh, come June. You don't, you don't want to be in Florida. So it's, it's, it's two o'clock on the dot. What have we been giving a two minute grace period while we just kind of talk to ourselves about how awesome Florida is. That sounds good. I think, okay. That could probably be a, a regular monthly thing. Two month how, period. 
about how awesome Ford is. Two minute grace period. Let's let's not forget to mix in Texas from time to time. Where where you were, where where you were and decided to leave. Yeah. Don't don't follow my last the last bastion of of free society, Texas. Yeah. I mean, I'm I love Utah. It's great here, but if we go to civil war, I'm moving back to Texas immediately. <laughs> it's, I think it's going to be Texas versus the other 49 states. You don't think Florida will jump in? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we we might. We'll see which way the wind's blowing. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take the Aaron Burr route on this and just stay neutral. <laughs> okay, so let me do this. Let me. I'm gonna turn on the radio waves. And then I'll do just a quick introduction of what we're doing there. And then we can come back here and we can get started. Cool. All right. That sounds good. Give me one second. Really going to be underwhelming because you're not even going to know anything different. And there's not, oh. we're not going to do any music. No, that's fine. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ryan Lee, host of the newest show on Turfs Up Radio, Light It Up. I hope you guys were able to see the or listen to the premiere yesterday. If not, it's every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Uh, but real quick, we're just going to interrupt this next hour of songs and music that you're listening to for a special preview and exclusive invite to our, the webinar I'm doing with the lighting boss, Ryan Jaso. So um, we're going to be doing that for the next hour. And then I need somebody to remind me in 58 minutes that I have to hit the not record button for Turfs Up Radio because well, there's another show kind of up. It's the three wise guys. So make sure you stick around on Turfs Up Radio and listen to those guys. But if I forget to turn off the button, then they can't do their show. So I need somebody to give me that reminder to, if, if we go long on the webinar, to turn that off. But thanks for listening here. And we're going to go ahead and get started now with uh, the webinar. It's Lighting for Profits webinar series that we're doing every month. And uh, each month we do a different topic. So this month is Managing the Client Journey for Profits. And I uh, just want to welcome you, Ryan Jaso, the lighting boss, and uh, thank you for your support on this venture. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I thought I was welcoming you, but now that now that you're a, shoot, a legend in Turfs Up Radio, um, <laughs> I, man, I feel pretty honored to be here. So this this is exciting. I, I'm, I'm glad that we're able to do this on a monthly basis. I'm glad we have the, a, a great following and great participants. And that's the key to this thing is the people who do uh, participate and ask their questions. And, and it's just made this webinar series awesome. And uh, looking forward to being a part of Turfs Up. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And you're right. One thing you mentioned is the, the people that are on. So we appreciate you guys registering and, and being active in this. If, if, if only like zero people register, then we probably stop doing it. So Thanks for being here. And I do want to remind you guys that we try to be interactive. So if you have any questions, uh, put them in the box. We may not answer it like at that second. We might uh, answer it right then. We might do it at the end. But regardless, if you have a question and it just pops into your mind, don't wait till the end because you will forget. No doubt. So what are we talking about today? You said we're, we're, we're managing the client journey. Are you going to kick this thing off before we get into story time with the boss? How do you want to handle it? Yeah, let me let me just share one thing, and then I think it, I think we you, you're going to kind of lead the discussion because of your experience that you just recently had, which kind of sparked this whole idea for this webinar. And I thought it was a, absolutely perfect because one of the things that I'm always talking about is you know closing on the spot, raising your price, being proud of who you are, and and and, and assume the sale, and all these things. And you know, people want to buy landscape lighting, they want to buy landscape lighting from you, and they want to buy landscape lighting from you today, like. I keep kind of, this is kind of my general theme with no matter what training I'm doing, it always goes back to these things. But what I realized is that after, after actually talking to you a few weeks ago about your experience, I was like, man, it hit me so hard. It was like, okay, those things are really easy for me to do because I'm also managing that client journey along the way. And there's this 10 step, you know, client bliss formula, I guess, is that patent pending or is that trademark? I'm not sure. I like it. But that, that it, there really is these 10 steps and it's really a bonus. There's a couple more maybe, but there's this, there's this formula that needs to happen. If you want to be able to close on the spot, if you want to assume the sale, if you wanted to be able to demand these, these things from your clients, and it's really easy to do these things if you've mastered these 10 steps. And it actually is pretty difficult to do if you're missing one or two of the steps. Very difficult to do. Yeah. One, one step you and I talked about how 
in your eyes, in, in your client's eyes, in your prospect's eyes, you're kind of starting out with this grade of 100. Well, everything that you do wrong starts taking away from that grade. And they're not going to buy from you unless they see you at a, at a 95 plus. And if they do buy, buy from you and you're below that, they're going to, they're just going to undercut the crap out of you. You're, you're not going to make a dime. So, so we have to do everything we possibly can to keep that grade as high to 100 as we possibly can throughout the process. Cause every little misstep knocks down that grade and it locks down your potential to close and the potential to close at the price point you want to close at. Love it. And you know, one thing that, uh, I, I guess I became aware of is it, it, when I was hearing your story and, and you're going to share that here in a minute is like, it doesn't really have much to do with how good of a lighting designer we are or what fixtures we're using, or it's, it's some of the things that we really focus on, you know, it's like, and, and that's great. Like you, you, you need those things in your arsenal, but we're not going to talk about those things in this training. We're going to talk about some of these other things that you just forget about and you just kind of overlook and don't think, see them as important, but the customer really focuses on that. And on your scale of, you know, zero to a hundred, you start at a hundred, you might think, oh, they don't care. That's just like a minus one or two, but sometimes it's like a minus 10 or 20, just on one dumb, dumb little thing that we think is dumb is huge to them. What we're going to talk about today actually has very little to do with the end result. And then that's kind of the moral of the story that that I'll jump into in just a minute, that, that the end result is kind of secondary in this whole thing. The, the end result doesn't get you necessarily a long-term client. And that's what we're looking for here. We're looking for long-term lo loyal clients. So the whole process from start to finish needs to be tightened up in order to continue that relationship. None of us are in the business, not, not Ryan Lee, not Ryan Jaso, not anyone else uh, listening in this panel is in the business of just one and done. That doesn't work for us, especially when there's going to come time. We know there's going to be some type of economic crash. We know 2008 is going to happen again at some point. We need loyal clients who are going to come back to us to do add-ons, to do maintenance, to do service. We can't sustain and survive at one and done. So that is going to be a huge, we'll say, topic or moral of this story, not, not the end result, as Ryan alluded to. Love it, man. So let's go ahead and get started. Why don't you share the experience that you had, which really kind of inspired this whole topic today? Okay. So, so story time with the boss. I don't know if we're going to make this a regular thing. Probably not, but, but there was, there's, I've been looking for a, a, a golf instructor for quite a while. And, um, this story reminds me so much of, of many of your businesses, small contractors, small service, um, small service companies. Uh, and, and you'll see why. Um, and it wasn't the end result. The, the end result actually was pretty great, but the whole experience really made me turn my head and think, man, are, are, are a lot of our clients making similar mistakes and just don't even realize it? Um, because I'm betting, I'm betting that this guy did, doesn't even realize, uh, uh, the issues that I saw. So I've been looking for an instructor for, for quite a while and had some, some great recommendations, uh, had a, had a great recommendations from a couple of friends who are really good players, uh, to go see this guy up, up in the Bradenton area, which is, uh, about a 30 minute drive for me. Okay. No big deal. My time's pretty valuable, but you know, it's, it's, it's 30 minutes. Um, so this dude better be good. Right. Anyhow, um, this guy teaches, uh, number of AJGA players. He's got countless uh, students who are um, college scholarship athletes, uh, actually two tour players and one tour winner. So 30 minute drive to, to go see him. No big deal, right? For, for someone who is, is, is world-class and, and I take my golf seriously, much, much like most of your clients take their home seriously. You have higher end clients, they want the best of the best for their home. So, so they're willing to go a little bit out of their way in order to get it, whether that little bit out of the way in my case is just driving further than I'd like, or maybe paying slightly more than they would like. They're willing to go out of their way to reach, uh, to get, to get the best. So, so that's what I did in, in this case. Um, 
drove out to the golf course only to find that it, the process was nowhere near as simple as me as just stepping out on the range and, and meeting and meeting this instructor. Uh, it was a public course where he's where he uh, teaches at, and well, golf is the only thing that people can really like do right now, so it's packed, right? So I've got to park in the back of the parking lot, which is like a ten minute walk alone, just to get up to the pro shop where I had to go get a token. I I literally had to go into the pro shop to get a token to get range balls. These were not like Pro V1 range balls. These were not new range balls. I had to get a token to get the crappiest range balls in the history of time. I had to get on, apparently, they have separate golf carts for this guy, for, for, his, for his clients to take to the back of the range where he is. He's got a nice little area in the back of the range, but the golf carts they give you to get back there are the biggest POSs in the history of time. So, I get on the golf cart, I grab my token. I'm, you know, I'm five, 10 minutes in at least. Um, I go down to that little, you guys have all seen that little token machine, right? Where they dump all those golf balls out. So I put my basket <laughs> under that machine. I put my token in, <laughs> like half the balls come out. I'm like, all right, that's weird. So is 15 balls gonna be enough? I, I don't know. I don't know what this <laughs> lesson's gonna be like. I, I pull it out and uh, then another like 30 balls drops down from the bucket. So they spray everywhere. I spent another five minutes collecting those 30 balls in front of 15 people who are standing at the tee box. And then 10 more minutes just to drive and get to the back of the range. So, so like I'm easily an hour in to this process, which made me a good 15 or 20 minutes late to have this, to have this lesson. Um, now the lesson itself, it, this guy is fantastic. Like it was a great 45 minutes or, or an hour of time. I really enjoyed it. Um, cost me $140. And, and for $140, honestly, I would expect that, that some, you know, playmate was serving me caviar when I walked up to the range. And that, obviously, I had a total opposite experience. Like, I got, had to get my own crappy range balls. I had to get this crappy golf cart. Like, I just, I would have expected something much, much higher level for the price that I paid, even though that experience was, was awesome. So uh, the, the thing that you've got all of those points that maybe there are little things that you guys are doing that you don't realize are a pain in the butt um, to your client. But um, I want you to, to think about your process and is, is this easy for these guys? Are they are they willing to truly pay a premium for what I'm offering? Another thing that reminded me so much of many of your uh, scenarios is that I had to play phone tag just to get a hold of this guy, like back and forth, because he's a one man band and he didn't have a secretary. There was no office administrator to set my appointment, to ask what I wanted, to, to you know, really talk about my needs or, or what I wanted uh, to do at a convenient time for me. So like I'm calling him at two in the afternoon. He's not done teaching till seven. He's calling me back at seven while I'm sitting down with my family trying to eat dinner. That doesn't work for me, kind of going back and forth. What would happen if I drove an hour out and we missed an appointment time because he doesn't have an online schedule? schedule. He doesn't have any way to communicate, uh, to confirm appointment times. Like, there are so many things that started to go through my mind. Like, what if I miss the next appointment? Like, I just, I, I paid a premium for this. Now I don't have confirmations of when things are going to be. And what you guys also have to realize is how valuable is not only your time, but how valuable is your client's time? Like, I, if I had to put a number, I, it's so hard to put a number on, on your own time. But let's just say that my time is worth 250 bucks an hour. Like, if I'm not... If I'm not getting 250 bucks an hour worth of worth of benefit out of it, I'm not doing it. I thought it was 2,000. You $2, were thousand dollars now. Two thousand dollars the other day for, just to talk to you. Not quite. I'm not quite there yet. Maybe there was a zero off. miscommunicated. But but take a look at it that way. So many of the clients that you guys are talking to, their time is much more valuable than mine. Their time might be worth five hundred, a thousand, two thousand dollars. Um, 
well, how much, how much money did you actually just cost them by having, by having to play phone tag, by having like little crappy, annoying parts of your process that you maybe didn't realize were there. I mean, if I just look at it, honestly, it turned into a two and a half to three hour ordeal. So that's 600, 700 bucks of, of my time, let alone the $140 that, that I had to pay. So, so this, so that this became just a really expensive venture for me just because you do, you, you install an amazing light system for somebody doesn't mean that, that they had a great overall experience. And in my case, I'm not going back. I, I can't go back. I can't, I can't take the chance of missing an appointment. I can't deal with all that BS that's happening on the side because my time is valuable. And my time is a lot less valuable. Chances are than most of the people that you guys are meeting with. So that's, that's why I called Ryan. We had a topic for today and I called Ryan. I'm like, listen, we, we have, we have to, we got to, we got to talk about the client journey because this scenario reminds me so much of what many of our clients um, are doing and probably missing and, and could be better at. And that's what the 10 step uh, program is all about that we're about to talk about. That's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing that. Because honestly, when you've told me the first time and just now, it's like, I can think of all these different situations that I've been a part of where I succeeded and failed or I'm like, crap, I could have done better, could have done better there. And that apply to our business. Exactly. I mean, from the initial phone call to going to meeting with them and everything that you went through, I mean, and, and you, you wanted to, you thought you were paying for that VIP experience just when you show up to the public golf course. And then again, you have to walk from the back of the parking lot. Even if it was a public golf course, had you walked up and there's a sign that says, you know, John Watson's VIP experience or whatever, you know, then that would be cool. You know, you'd be like, Hey, this is kind of nice. And you don't have to go and deal with the crappy golf balls and everything else. So uh, I love the, I love the story. I love the analogy that we're going to make um, with everything that we got here. And I, one thing that I thought of that when you were talking just now is, is just because you think that you're charging, you're giving someone a deal because this guy maybe should just raise his price. You know, for you, you're like, man, I got to pay 140. You wanted the VIP experience. And maybe he's like, well, if you wanted the VIP experience, I'd have to charge you 500. And that's fine. You got to, you got to align your price with your expectations, you know? No, no doubt. And I would have been happy to, to pay. I'm telling you that golf experience was great. I would have been happy to pay more for it. I would have been happy to pay more for it. But not, yes. but not the, not the experiences that surrounded it, that, that went up to it. Exactly. And I think as contractors, we, we, a lot of times think, well, I'm giving this guy a deal, so it's okay. But like, no, they, they still expect the red carpet, white glove experience that, that you kind of promised and told them about and their other, their other people have gotten, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's a phenomenal point. Okay. So let's just jump right into it. We're just going to go through them real quick, kind of one, one at a time. Um, did you have something? No, number one, man. Number okay. one, that was so key here. And that first phone call, the fact that I had to go back and forth, just chat my ass. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned like, it would have been nice if, you know, if they didn't answer that, if they had online, you could just go and schedule something. Obviously that wasn't, that wasn't a factor. You, you had really no option. You just had to keep calling the guy until he was able to call you back. Yeah, I think he had an email address online and it, you know, didn't really answer an email. And obviously I'm, I'm more than a qualified prospect. <laughs> like I was someone ready and, and willing to go. Um, and the fact that I had to follow up an email with two phone calls uh, was was amazing to me. But I understand it based on the fact that he doesn't have help. Like he doesn't have anyone helping him. Yeah, but I think you you were actually a little bit more persistent and patient than most people because I know yeah. I've I've when I was starting my business I didn't have someone answering the phone and I would call people back and they go oh we already got someone I'm like yep. you already, what do you mean you already got someone I mean it's been three hours they like they already installed the lights they're like no no they just answered the phone and we're gonna move forward with them I'm like holy cow it's been three hours in my mind I was like what's three hours but listen when they when they they don't have a lot of time like we're talking about. And they've got a 10 minute window to be like, oh yeah, crap, we need to get lighting because we got that party coming up. They're not going to just schedule two weeks to sit here and follow up with you. So answering that phone every single time, whether it's, you know, I mean, it really shouldn't be yourself because you can't do all these different things. So if you can't afford an office manager, then get an answering service. And 
if you're not that busy, then you pay per like minute. So you're not, it's not going to cost you that much. Every time you're paying that bill, it's an investment, which means you just landed a new job. So get an answering service, get something so that every time that phone rings, you're answering it. You know, uh, it reminds me that uh, the reason why I was persistent is because this guy came highly recommended. And in theory, he had a great brand. So a great brand and great recommendations can buy you a little time. But that, that doesn't mean that it wasn't extremely irritating to me. Uh, a, a couple of hours I could see, a couple of days back and forth with 7 p.m. phone calls. That doesn't work for anybody. Yep. So that was just the first thing. And again, you know, if it would have been just that and then everything else just went like perfectly smooth, you'd probably be back with the guy. But again, we're trying to keep that score at 100, yeah. not at 90 or 85. Mm -hmm. Yep. So number one, I know number one seems simple and we've talked about it multiple times, but man, it's so key. So obviously answering the phone is important, but again, I know some of you guys are like, yeah, yeah, I know, but you, you don't have an answering service, it's just still a one man show. So you gotta, you gotta get the money and invested in that. And then number two is getting them excited. And, you know, we talked about this on one of our trainings about pre-qualifying and everything else, but you really want to spend the time with them to uh, kind of build up yourself, build up your company, get them excited for them to want to meet with you. And this is on the phone, right? We want to focus spending this time on the phone, getting them excited or, or remind me, this 10 step program is getting them excited in person. And then number three, pre-qualify, uh, you know, you need to make sure you're setting the right expectations and setting the budget because if they're expecting something that's different, like in Ryan's story, or he was expecting something that's different. I feel like if the guy had told him or sent him and had an automated email for everybody that signs up with him and says, Hey, just want to give you a quick uh, rundown on what to expect. Here's the golf course you're going to go to park in the parking lot, walk and literally step-by-step -step instructions, walk to this, go do this, go get the 15 golf balls and then refill the 30 after they fumble. <laughs> if, if he had like spelled that out, you would have been yep. expecting it, you know? And exactly. so it wouldn't have come as a surprise. Obviously some of those things shouldn't have happened, but even if he was like, make sure you get the coin, it, it wouldn't, it's not the best. I still wouldn't, if I was him, I wouldn't do my process like that. But had mm -hmm. he set those expectations, then it would have been normal for you. You'd been like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I remember he said to go in here and Oh, sure enough. Yep. And now I go get the balls. Now I'm here and I'm happy. I'll tell you what, I feel like every time I let, I let one of our clients down or as a team, we, we let one of our clients down. It's because we didn't set proper expectations. Like what, what to expect for us, you know, in distribution, um, how many days, when should it ship? Like we didn't set that time. What should we expect when the shipment arrives? Um, it's always about setting those expectations and, and the time to do it is, is when you're on the phone with those people. So they're not expecting something that, that they're not going to get. Yeah. And it could be, I'm trying to think of a few different examples, but it could be even just setting the appointment, letting them know, Hey, just so you know, it's a busy time of year for us. We are booked out four or five days just to meet with people for the initial appointment. I hope you guys will be patient with us just so that they know that they're not getting the shaft. Like why, why, you know, why, why can't you meet tomorrow? Like if you explain it, it's going to be fine. Well, this some, along the same lines, what if you set an 1130 appointment, but you, you know, you're going to be running a little tight, just let them know, Hey, I may end up being 15 or 20 minutes late. I apologize in advance. I'll do my best to get there at 1130, but it is a very time, very busy time for us. Traffic's crazy. We may be a little late for this one. That's where number four comes into play. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you know, confirm the appointment. And this is important because it, it does a couple of things. One, it confirms the appointment to make sure that they're going to be there. So you don't waste a 45 minute drive to their house or whatever it is, but it shows that you guys are organized. It shows uh, follow up. It shows most companies aren't doing this. So if you can confirm that appointment uh, and like, like Ryan said, when you're on the way, it's like, Hey, just so you know, I'll be there in an hour. And if they don't answer, just leave them a voicemail you know, calling. And if they don't answer and you don't leave a voicemail, that's not confirming anything. That's just a missed call. So leave them a voicemail, let them know who you are. You're on your way. If you are running late, you definitely want to communicate that in as much advance notice as possible. And if you think you're going to be 15 minutes late, maybe tell them like 
2025, just in case something else comes up, it's always better to, you know, under promise over deliver. So if you tell them you're gonna be 15 minutes late and then you show up 20, again, your score is coming way down on you. Like you've got to really set the right expectations on really on all these steps. Yep. Again, number four, very straightforward step, but, but something that is missed all the time. This dude sure didn't confirm an appointment with me. I know when I did not confirm the appointments and they weren't there, I would get super pissed at them, but it's like, well, I probably should have just called. I mean, I was just driving for 45 minutes anyway. Why don't I just call and confirm it? Because sometimes I would get there, you ring the bell. They're not there. You call them. Hey, uh, I'm here. Oh yeah. Sorry. I forgot about you. I'm 15 minutes away and they're lying to you. 15 minutes is actually 30 minutes. And then it's like, okay, well, I got to go to my next appointment now. So thanks very much which again is easy to deflect blame and blame it on them. But just a simple confirmation phone call definitely would have helped resolve most of those situations. And as you say, said, as you've said multiple times, there's no such thing as over communication. There's not. So one of the things that we're adding in here in the 10 step uh, formula is um, really just kind of setting yourself up for success uh, before you even meet with them. So, I, I kind of just got thrown off a minute because I think uh, one of these other steps, I'll bring this up, but the confirmation confirming appointment is not when you're on your way. It's really like once, once you create the appointment. So for us, it, I had an office manager that would make the appointment. They would send out an email that said, and, and we would tell them, Hey, we're going to send you an email with a confirmation appointment. Make sure that we have everything correct on there because we have their name, their address, the appointment time and everything else. So we tell them we're setting expectations. We're sending you an email. Make sure you look out for that. It's going to have the appointment confirmation. It's also going to have some addresses that you can check out if you want before our meeting, if you want to drive by some of the homes that we've done and some references. So mm. it kind of confirms again, the appointment, but it gives them some additional information. And sometimes we'll get an email back. Oh, I thought you, you had Wednesday. I thought it was Tuesday. So that just resolved a whole ton of issues that were going to pop up. Yeah, we, I mean, confirming, confirming appointments, confirming information could be steps like one through eight. If you wanted it to be, uh, there's, this just shows a level of professionalism. That's what it does. Just confirming is confirming professionalism on your, on your end. That's what it is. And then so what? the excite the su excitement emails. Okay, so we've confirmed their appointment after they've hung up the phone. We've confirmed it via email. Now, now I really like this. I like this step number five, and I'm not sure. I would like to know how many people actually do this. I, I, I'd like to hear how many guys are already um, sending out what our number five excitement emails. And do you want to explain what you mean by that, right? Yeah, it's basically just you know. You're, you've got a few days uh, of time before you're going to meet with them. And so uh, it just, it gives you an opportunity to, to get a couple more touch points with them and build them, build some excitement, build the relationship between you and them. So uh, it, you can do a variety of different things. It could be just a simple email that talks about some of the top frequently asked questions that come up. Uh, it could be a video where you make, and it could be uh, you know, talking about uh, the appointment process and what to expect on that appointment. It could be client testimonials. So if you can get some video testimonials of your clients talking about how awesome you are, it's much better to hear from them telling you how awesome you are. You know, if I'm like, man, I'm so awesome. It's like, okay, now what? But if someone else is saying I'm so awesome, that, that means that much more. So I'll leave it up to you in terms of what you want to send, but you want to start building that relationship with this client and start generating some excitement and again, setting expectations so that they know how long does an install take? How long does our appointment take when we meet? What to expect? What we're going to go over? Yes, I'm going to give you a price. Yes, you'll be able to get on the schedule that day. Stuff like that is super valuable so that when you get there, they're already prepared to make a decision to move forward with you. I, you know, if you follow these steps and you have the right excitement emails that, that we call them, I mean, the job can almost be sold before you get there. Then it's, then it, then it's just all yours to lose, right? That's that's what we're trying to do is put you in position where like all you got to do is not f up to get the sale. Just don't f up once you're there. And and so much of this, what we're talking about, um, can be automated too. You know, going back to kind of 
our our last month's conversation with a good CRM, a, a good or the month before, you know, a good office administrator. Like these are things that that you don't have to be doing that can be automated, so they do not fall through the cracks. Quick self promotion, real quick here. If you join Landscape Lighting Secrets, I give you the scripts, I give you the video sequence, I give you everything, the automations, all that. So you literally just have to kind of like plug and play and it goes out and it's, it's working awesome. I mean, literally we had our coaching call yesterday and someone said, man, I just finished it. I sent it out. It was terrible. I looked terrible on camera, but the people said they loved it. You know? So I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. Um, this is so key. Step number five is, is so key to having the job in the palm of your hands. Yeah. And it, it really is. You mentioned it. I call it the pre-sale emails because it's, pre-selling it and you get there and then it's just kind of easy to close on the spot. And that's why I say I, I like this 10 step client bliss formula, because again, if I, I'm, I'm always like, yeah, just close on the spot. Just ask for the sell. Like they want lighting. Right. But again, if you screw up these steps, it's very difficult. If you do these steps in, in order and you do them correctly, then it actually is pretty dang easy. Yep. No doubt. So this is where I got off a little bit. We were talking about confirming Obviously, the first confirmation needs to come right after you get that appointment scheduled, send out an email, but then you want to confirm when you're on your way. Uh, and, you know, one note is be on time and be early. You know, I was taught that 15 minutes early is on time and on time is, is late. So, you know, I'd rather me be there 15 minutes early waiting on them rather than that, than just showing up on time and they're looking at the clock like, what time is this guy going to get here? Yep. No, no doubt. That's easy. Six, we discussed that. Oh, here we go. Th this, that VIP, <laughs> that VIP approach that I was so hoping for. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, you, you thought you were getting that. You thought you were like, man, VIP, I'm going to show up. They're going to have like, I'm going to park in the front. They're going to literally have a red carpet with like the golf experience of a lifetime. You go there, they take your clubs, you go to the spot. They've got the, the Pro V1, uh, balls just teed up for you so you don't have to like lean down like that's what you thought you were getting and instead it was something completely different my supermodel and caviar that's that's what i was expecting i don't know what caviar tastes like but I'm, i bet it's i bet it's amazing i'd rather eat oreos oreos uh, whatever <laughs> all i know is i didn't get it <laughs> so here's so the thing this this is so important because if you could have like i've seen people that have like badass websites they look they look like someone you'd want to do business with. And then you call and you get the appointment and then like, you know, the bell rings and you look outside and you see this white truck. It's like an 86 with like the bumper, like kind of falling off. And you're like, this isn't the same company I saw online, is it? You know, and a, a nice guy, nice presentation, everything else. But just that one little thing, that truck, you're like, it just doesn't match the brand. It doesn't match the experience that I wanted, you know? But if all of a sudden that, that truck shows up and it's logoed and it's got the pictures and everything else and it matches what they saw on the website, it just gives them congruency and it just makes them feel like, okay, this, this is what, this is it. This is part of that red carpet, you know? And again, they're not going to come out and say that like, well, now I noticed your 86 pickup out there doesn't, isn't fully wrapped. Like they're not going to say that, but they are thinking that. Okay. So you need to hundred uh, percent. Yeah. All the way through. I, I don't think, I think that, uh, many people just don't realize because no one's no one's telling them no one, their, their clients their prospects aren't telling them hey you know that's off so we don't see it we're kind of blinded and, and i'm sure i'm sure if i just if i did a, a look at my business i guarantee i've got blinders on on certain things that i'm not seeing um you know we i think that a lot of this we can touch on in the next video or the next webinar which which I, I think we're going to focus on branding in the next one. Right. Um, but you mentioned you wrote grass on there. What, what the hell does grass mean? Well, if walking in someone's grass, as opposed to just walking uh, on their, their sidewalk, uh, walking down their pathways. I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge separator between the, the white glove and then Joe, Joe blow, you know, whatever you want to call them, the blow and go guys. They're, they're going down the grass lines. They don't care. The professionals are walking down pathways. Yeah, there's just no reason to cut the corner. And to you, like, who cares? It's just grass. But to them, it's zoysia. You know what I mean? So, like, just don't cut the corner. And even if you don't have a truck that's Ooh. fully wrapped, make sure it's clean. I remember one time I was going to take some people out, 
And uh, I, I was, I was conscious of this. I went and cleaned my truck before inside and out. And then, and I always kept my truck fairly clean for this reason, but I was taken around and I was actually going to take them to another client's house. And they, they mentioned it. They're like, wow, your truck is super clean. Didn't you say you have four kids? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I mean, you should see my wife's car, but they, they see that and they see that, wow, you're an organized, you're a clean person. You take care of your stuff that automatically translates to the install, you know? And so you want to make sure you're, you're clean. If you have a beard, keep it well trimmed. You know, um, I put shoes, briefcases, animals, even if you have like an in, in home demo kit, or you have like a, a uh, what's it called? Just your, to write on stuff, briefcase, whatever it is. Uh, why can't I think of what that's called? It's a little board you write on. A whiteboard? I don't know what you're talking whiteboard. about. Who takes a whiteboard to a meeting? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, let's play charades in front of everybody. Clipboard. Okay. I don't want to yeah, do that. You just won. Uh, Ryan Jace was going to give you like $1,000. So huh. a clipboard. Just don't set the clipboard even on their their nice stuff, okay? Um, I've seen people just like come and they throw the fixtures on countertops and stuff. And it's like, it's not going to damage it. But in their mind, they're like, you know how much those countertops cost? Lay off, bro. So like you have to start thinking differently and, and not think like, well, who cares? This stuff's yeah. indestructible. Like you, you've got to do that. And the animal thing is if you don't like dogs, you need to start liking dogs. <laughs> you like dogs. <laughs> you, you, you will get down there and let them kiss your face and do everything. Cause that is probably the key in this whole presentation. If you can fall, if you can get their dog to fall in love with you, you're pretty much going to walk out of there with a check. <laughs> you're right when when you're no when you're right you're right you you're always right (laughs) well you you made it i don't know if you realize this but you know when you said you don't don't cut the corner like if you cut the corner on their sidewalk they're gonna think you're gonna cut the corner on the install or don't cut the corners don't don't set that precedent that we are going to do things half-assed or haphazardly we're going to do things as professionally as absolutely possible Awesome. So then we get to the uh, actual sales presentation. And this should not be something that's like, you know, I've been doing this 20 years, I know exactly what to say and everything else. This should be something that is prepared, practiced, memorized, like you, you really need to make sure you're hitting on all the spots here. Because again, you could have a really good sales presentation. But if you forget to talk about as something as dumb as how do the lights turn on, or the fact that you do have insurance, and what does that mean for them or something like that, that is often overlooked, then it just gives them another opportunity to think about it or to want to go look for what else is out there. Yeah, number eight is something that you are constantly not only rehearsing, but refining. It's never gonna be perfect. You're never going to have the perfect presentation and and technology changes, portfolios change, ideologies change, clients change. Um, You gotta be prepared for all that. So you have to practice, 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 and refine, especially, especially when you don't get a sale. That's when you take a hard look at, at not just number eight, but the whole entire steps system is where, where did I go wrong? And practice rehearsal is key to all of this reps, get your repetitions in. Yeah. And it feels dumb. Like, you know, if, if it's just you and you're, practicing to your wife or whatever, but just do it. it like it will help you out. And it, as long as you are getting better, that's all that matters. So, so number nine, close the cell. So again, this is, this becomes very easy. If you've done all these other things right up until this point, it's very difficult if you haven't. So if you do these things, then you need to brainwash yourself and really get mentally conditioned, get, have the mindset that they really do want to buy lighting. Like they, they did call you. Okay. Uh, they want to buy lighting. They want to buy from you and they want to buy from you today. Okay. If you've got that mindset, then you're not going to just let them off the hook. You're going to assume the sell and they're, they're going to just move forward. If you're the type of person that's like, well, I know they probably want to think about it. And you're bringing that up. It's like, wait, what, why are you bringing that up? Like they want to buy lighting. They want to buy lighting from you and they want to buy lighting from you today. So just let them get what they want for once in their life. (laughs) Get out of, get out of your own way. Number, number nine seems weird to be on this list, but you can't have client bliss unless they actually buy from you. <laughs> you can't, you can't, can't have it. So they have to buy it from you and it's gotta be a quick process. 
They don't need to think about it for a couple of weeks. I'm not saying that they're, they're, there's obviously an exception to every rule here, but nine times out of 10, they don't need to sit around and think about this. You've answered all their questions. If you haven't answered all their questions, now's the time. They have other questions. If they're not biting, we'll find out why. Find out why they're not biting and then make sure that you tailor the presentation or the proposal to those needs. You obviously missed something during your your whole during this process. You you missed something that's important to them. So find out what it is. That's the key to client bliss, finding out what they want and then delivering on it. And now's the best time. It's so hard to do from a phone or from a computer. If you're already in front of them, let's do it right then and there. You just got to have the chops to ask. Stop hiding. Don't hide behind computers or telephones. Let's do it right then and there. Let's figure out what, why we're not moving forward if they're not moving forward. Yeah. And a lot of people struggle here because, you know, because of their own, they don't, everyone says the same thing. Oh, I don't want to be a used car salesman. It's like, I don't know where this used car salesman thing came from, but you're not selling used cars. So that's the good, that's the good news. Uh, you're selling a high quality landscape lighting system. And here's the key. If they don't buy from you that day, yeah, I mean, people say, well, give me, well, no, actually, I just got a guy. That's fine. But generally speaking, if they don't buy from you that day, they're going to go with someone else. And that someone else is not as good as you. At least they shouldn't be. Like, you should be better than them. So if you're really wanting to serve your client at the highest level, if you're really wanting them to get more than what they want, not just what they want, but more than what they want, and you really are the best, then it, take, it makes sense to work on your salesmanship. It doesn't have to be a negative word. doesn't have to have, be something we beep out or talk about in a negative way. It's, it's part of the formula. It's part of being a successful lighting designer and being the best in your industry and in your area. Sales is part of it. So you can either ignore it and just keep doing what you're doing, or you can address it and be like, you know what? I'm going to focus on it and I'm going to ask for the next sale. And it may not happen, but you'll know it gives you confidence the next time. Hey, I did that. And then next time you'll do it. And once you do close it, you'll get that confidence and you'll go, man, that felt really, really good. Everything in life is a sale. It, it, everything in life is a sale. It, it doesn't matter if I'm trying to explain to the wife why I should be allowed to play golf on Saturday morning. Like it's, it's all a sales process. So you might as well get good at it. And then the last step we have is a high quality leave behind. Um, this is for whether they decide to move forward or not, even if they decide to move forward, it's still nice to have a really nice high quality lead behind. Again, it just completes that formula and it just, it, it affirms to them, wow, these guys, these are the right guys. You know, if you're like, okay, here's my card and you got the free one from Vista print, like that's not a high quality lead behind. Like I'm talking at least a front and back nice, but eventually we did it about eh, five, six years ago, where it was like a 16, 20 page and a lookbook with some feature benefit stuff on it. And if you can get to that point, and you'll have to raise your prices usually to be able to do that. Uh, that's awesome because people feel like, like when you buy a car or whatever, like you, you just feel like, wow, this is cool. You know, they, they get something physical right then instead of feeling like they're giving you a check for $12,000 that's going to get installed in eight weeks. This is another thing. I bet a lot of guys aren't doing this. And this is so key to wrapping the whole thing up is this high quality lead behind. And this is an area where people can, can boost closing ratios and, and, boost that that grade immensely right off the bat the that number five the excitement emails and those high quality leave behinds those those are so easy to just change right off the bat okay so that that completes the 10 step formula but when we when we started putting this together we had 10 and then we kept talking and we're like oh crap i think this volume might go from one to ten it might actually go to 11. so yeah we should just stop talking <laughs> I'll stop we talking. Add, we added step 11. <laughs> and really what it is, is, you know, one through 10 is everything up until the sale. But just because you got that client doesn't mean it's over. You know, yeah, you got the sale, you got the money, everything's great. But one thing when we started was Jason was saying, this isn't just a one-time event. We're not just trying to get their sale today. It's great to get their front yard lighting, but we want their backyard. We want their lake house. We want their new house when they move every four years. We want their uh, referral to the people they work with, referrals to their neighbors. I mean, one cell could literally multiply by five or 10, you know? Yeah. So step 11 is really focusing on the white glove, red carpet 
you know, aspect that we've talked about when it comes to doing the installation. And that really comes down to developing standard operating procedures and checklists. And you can do this fairly easily by documenting what you do on a daily basis. So, and so that your guys know, Hey, when we do this install, here's the very first thing when we, we do, when we get to the property, here's the second thing, here's the third thing. And you'll make a list and then you go do the install and you're like, oh, wait, we forgot about this. Let's add this. And that it's actually in between step three and four. And we don't leave until everything's cleaned up because I can't tell you how many times before I had checklists, I'd have uh, clients call them and I'd, I'd, I'd follow up and I'd say, hey, how's everything look? Hey, the lights look great. But, you know, we noticed there was some like uh, garbage and stuff in the flower beds and your guys, they left this big red bar in our grass. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. You know, and again, it's just. That's that point system was at a hundred and now we just screwed it up because we left some like wire clippings by the front door, which that sh has nothing to do with the lighting design, the installation, the experience, but it really does. It just took away from our perfect score. Yeah. And we know those wire clippings will be gone in a couple of days with a little bit of wind with the blower. Like we know that, and that's the problem. They don't necessarily know that. Maybe they don't even know that their grass is going to heal after you, you hit it with a geo ripper or trench or whatever. You know, that's just something that has to be explained. Expectations have to be set, too, with that. Um, but I tell you what, I love, I know it's it's stupid, but, like, if someone's coming into my house and they throw on those little booties, those little white booties, I'm like, these people care about my house. <laughs> I, I always, I, I get a kick out of it. I know it really doesn't do much because their shoes are already probably super clean. But I like when they put on the booties. I also... I love the idea of actually having white gloves, actually having white latex gloves while you're putting the fixtures together. We know that it means nothing because your hand grease is, is if anything, it's just going to enhance the, or make the a copper fixture patina faster. Like we get that. But if a client sees your installers with actual white latex gloves while they're putting uh, a fixture in the ground, they're gonna, they're, they're, their minds are gonna be blown. Just little things that don't cost you much that can really resonate with, with the client go a long way. You just gave me an idea. I mean, one, use white gloves on your install. Uh, but two is do uh, the red carpet. If you guys do demos, go get some red carpet and just roll that out right out to the, from their door to the street. Set the, set the, uh, then, set the mood. Then move that bus. <laughs> yeah. But um, th that's really important, guys, because I'm not joking. People, they get butt hurt over the dumbest stuff that's dumb to you and I, but it's super important to them. So it, you've got to develop these checklists. Part of the checklist is a walk around with the client, let them know you're leaving. You want to walk it through. And it's again, setting expectations. Hey, this is where we trenched in the sod. We went ahead and watered it in to help, uh, to help uh, the grass kind of grow back together. But you're going to notice over the next week or so, it's going to go a little bit yellow. Don't worry, it's going to come back green. It's going to look great. But again, you're letting them know so that they don't call you and say, hey, it looks great, but there's this yellow line in our grass. Because you already told them exactly what's going to happen. So now all of a sudden, it's not an issue. Yeah, we can't assume. We can't assume that what's dumb to, to us is dumb to them. So so why not just take all, just, just take every chance of irritating someone or letting them down, disappointing them, just take it off the board. Take it off the board. Yep. And then... Uh, an add on to step 11 is just this rinse and repeat for service. So you're going to have a checklist for installation. You're going to have a checklist for service. Understand the same, same things are going to apply. I mean, if you go there and uh, they've got a light out, uh, don't just check for that one light out, check the whole property. Cause chances are they probably have something else wrong too, that they don't know yet. And if you don't do it, they're going to call you back like two days later and be like, Hey, you were just out. And it's like, why not just be like, Hey, we went ahead and checked the system. Uh, we noticed there was actually another light out. We got, took the, took care of that for you. We went ahead and straightened all the path lights. Uh, we took a level to those. Like, you know, just go go above and beyond. And if you're like, well, I can't afford to do that. I've got something else to do. Well, slow down and charge more and do that because these people are expecting that white glove red carpet service. Yep. You don't need to get in and out super quick to save them money. You're there. Take your time while you're there and charge them for it. They'll appreciate it. Clean those, even if they just say, hey, one, one LED was out, clean the fixtures, straighten them, like Ryan said. Go above and beyond, then send them a bill. If they don't want to pay that bill, okay, then they're not your client. You really didn't waste much. Like if they don't want to pay for that white glove service, well then why, why are you servicing their system to begin with? All right, so I, sorry, I forgot to, that was step 12. 
the power well, of shit. live the power of live presentations. <laughs> Very anticlimactic. Uh, I know. Well, we wanted to get to the, those two extra bonus steps. We got the two extra bonus steps. So rinse and repeat for service. There's our 12 steps. Hey, we could have stopped uh, at 10, you guys. At least you got 12. I don't even know where to take this from here. Well, now we, what do we do? Well, now we go to this. And you brought this up. You hinted uh, at it a little bit ago. When I, every time I'd go and, and assume the sale and close and follow these steps and everything else, you know, it's not 100%. It's just, it's not going to happen every time. So what I would do is I'd go sit in my truck and be like, dang it, like, what went wrong there? Like, they seemed like the perfect people. They were both there, you know, I, I, trying to like uncover what went wrong. And I could have been like, well, you know, they're just cheap or they're not my customer or like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a salesperson. I'm a lighting designer. I mean, I've heard it all, right? And I've thought it all and I've probably said it all, but it's important to evolve. It's important to get better because everything that we go over in any one of these trainings is not, it's not like it's not like it's going to happen in a vacuum. It's not perfect. There's always different factors that are going to come up. Everything's going great, and then all of a sudden the husband's got to go. He gets a phone call or something like that. There's stuff that's going to happen. So it's important to review your experiences, and I, that's what I would do. And I'd be like, "Oh crap, I forgot. To, why didn't I tell him about that?" And maybe that wasn't the reason they didn't move forward, but maybe it was. And so I would make sure to make a note of that that the next presentation, now I was going to mention that, or if they had a question that I was like, man, that's a really good question. I'll bet other people have that concern. I'd make sure to include that in my sales presentation. And before you know it, you have a pretty dang good polished sales presentation. It's not perfect, but it's way better than where you started from. Yeah, yeah all good points. Um, well said. And, and, you know, we hate rejection. There, I don't know anyone. I don't, raise your hand in the chat, man, if you actually like love rejection. <laughs> I don't know anyone that does. So, so we make excuses so that we feel better about ourselves. Like, no, they, they didn't reject me. I rejected them. The hell with them. I don't need them. I'm better off without them. We got maybe you are, maybe you're not. But, but, but the fact is you spent all this time with them. So you might as well have been rewarded with something. So, so your failure may have been right in that initial phone call that, that they weren't, they truly weren't your client. So why didn't you, why, why didn't you find that out early on so that you did not waste your time? So there's a failure somewhere in that system if, if they're not closing. It's as simple as that. There is some type of failure there. And, and all of my visit, biggest evolutions um, have come from failures. They, they don't come from wins. Winning makes you complacent. It's losing that, that will either just drive you into the ground or push you to become better. And I'm hoping that that the the losses, the failures, are pushing all of us. You know, I someone, uh, I, I man, I heard someone say this beautifully. They said, kind of use 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 uh, fear and failure as as a tailwind pushing you, not a headwind holding you back. Yeah, I like that. I don't know where I got that quote from. It said, "If you succeed, you win. If you fail, you learn." And it's tough. It's it's easy to you know write on a PowerPoint. But when you're going through that failure, it's tough to admit that, that you, you, you did fail. Like, you know, and it's like, crap, I thought I was better than this, you know, but like I failed, I did not do what I was planning on doing. So I felt that was a failure. But if you uh, reword it to learning, you know, it's a, well, it's just a learning experience. And the key here is you actually have to learn that, which, which means you have to change, which means that that takes work, you know, either mentally or physically or something. And it's not easy to do, but I promise you, if you can adopt that mindset, you're going to, you're going to, your, your failures that you're experiencing now. And, and the reason why you're not where you think you should already be is because you haven't done enough to change those failures into learning experiences, because we're all failing. It, it happens every day. The people that are succeeding are the people that are learning from those failures and getting better and getting better and better. And that's why they're ahead in the game. Yep. Yep. Well said. Well said. Do we have another? Um, do we have another slide here? Yes, we do. Oh. Last one. Perfect. Last last slide. Then we can start taking some some questions. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, don't forget to put them in the chat or the Q and A, anything like that, and then we'll handle those. So, uh, Ryan mentioned next week we're going to do uh, this on branding, and you know our monthly webinar series is evolving. We're we're trying to learn 
in, internally, like what we can do to better serve you guys. And we're trying to come up with topics that are exciting and helpful so that you feel like, okay, it's worth my hour of investment to, to go attend this, you know? Yeah. And so um, we feel like branding is kind of the next thing. What I, I can't remember. I know we talked about pricing before we had like formally kicked this off, but then it was pre-qualifying and then it was uh, technology. I don't even technology. Know. Yeah, technology. Yeah, we did pricing. We did technology. Yeah. Yeah. And then now, now we're doing this. So we're trying to, you know, get better and stuff like that, but we're trying to kind of evolve in our process. And we feel like branding is, is really important and it's kind of the next step in going over in our process. So one of the things the I brand want to mention, Oh, go ahead. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump in, but branding ties heavily into what we were discussing today without a doubt. Oh, big time. I mean, I mentioned like the wrap trucks, you know, the website, things like that. When someone refers you, a lot of people think, well, I don't have to do that, whatever that is. I don't have to wrap my truck. I don't have to have a good website. I don't have to do that because I'm just word of mouth. You know, I'm small. All my business is word of mouth. I don't do any advertising, but that's a myth. And that is something that I don't know where that came from, but we're all conditioned to think like that. But honestly, when people get referred to you, if your business really is word of mouth, then that's even more of a reason why you want to work on your branding, why you want to have a solid website, why you want to have your wrap trucks, because people have this expectation and, but they're going to go, sometimes they do call you directly, but most of the time they go and Google search you. So if they Google search you and they can't find you, well, that's a problem. They're going to find three to five other lighting companies. I know that. And so if you don't have your online reviews dialed in, if you don't have a really good looking website, Facebook, all these things, then chances are you're missing out on leads that you don't even know about right now. Yeah. Well, don't, don't, uh, don't spoil too much of it because, but there are a lot of things that we can talk about. Branding, uh, branding is, is the field is so deep and there's so many different areas that, that we could even offshoot, um, with branding. So I'm excited about the next webinar. I don't know if we've set a date for that yet. I, I guess we will in the next few minutes, but uh, I'm really excited to tie the branding conversation into the one we had today because it just makes this process so much easier. It makes the 10 steps so much easier. So you do start at 100 and it allows you to stay at 100 throughout the process. Right. Okay, so give me just a minute. I got to turn off. Uh, we're Just so you guys know, we are broadcasting live on Turfs Up Radio. I appreciate all the Turfs Up Radio listeners uh, jumping in. Stick around because in a couple of minutes, it's going to be the three wise guys, but I got to turn this off. We're going to stay live for those of you that are on the webinar. Uh, we're going to stay live right now. I just got to turn off that. So thanks for listening in. If you're on Turfs Up Radio. Yeah. Thank you for the reminder on that, Jim. And thank you guys for the nice comments too. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. I saw that. I was like, okay, we're there. So uh, we're disconnected. Now we can say whatever we want. Fantastic. Just F-bomb after F-bomb. Yeah. Um, what, should I, should I, Tease next week, um, Turfs Up Radio, what we're doing on Tuesday. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you, can, I, you, I, you can be on there, but I was going to talk to you first about the topic. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> then, uh, then I'll hold back. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's whatever, man. So, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm having a special guest. You guys may have heard of him, but next week, about five, I think he'll be on about 515 Eastern on Tuesday. Make sure you guys tune in to Turfs Up Radio. You can go to turfsupradio.com and download the app, uh, or you can just go onto the website and listen, but uh, I'm going to have the lighting boss on there. So it should be a pretty fun, pretty fun episode. And, and normally I'm pretty reserved and pretty uh, politically agnostic in this, but um, I'm, I'm fired up on a couple of things and a couple of things I'm seeing on in the industry. Uh, so I think you guys are going to enjoy it. I just assume podcast, anything goes. So um, who knows? I might have my, I'm not sure. I might be bench pressing and eating smoked meat while I'm, uh, cursing out, uh, my competitors and other that's, people. In that's the what we're I don't know talk about though, <laughs> live on the radio. And I've been told that, you know, uh, the F word is not, uh, not acceptable. All right. so. No problem. As long as no we problem. that, then I feel like you could say what you want because you have a buzzer. We just, we just got to get you like a blow horn or something. I know. Three I, second, I, three I second have, delay. I don't have a, uh, I don't have a producer. It's just me, but maybe if I know you're going to swear, I can be like, <laughs> I, I love it. I'm excited about, I'm excited about this, uh, this podcast and turf up radio. So hopefully you guys can, can tune in, but, um, 
any questions? I only saw I only saw one question. This, this is probably a topic where there aren't many questions. Um, Jim James Morris was asking about uh, some some maintenance pricing. Ryan, I don't know if you want to dive in on that. If you have thoughts as far as maintenance pricing, I mean, there's so many different options out there. Yeah. So maintenance, uh, I, I have what I do. I mean, yeah, you can adopt whatever you want to do, but, uh, I typically like to lead with a two visit per year, uh, system. So like if they sign up today, we'll be out in six months and then we'll be out in 12 months. It's already pre-scheduled. It's already on your calendar. And, um, we charge, I would charge like 20 bucks a light, uh, with like a $400 minimum. And what it includes is you're going to go out for those two scheduled ones, but it also includes also unlimited service calls as well in between there. So if they call out, like, let's say you were out last week and then they call and there's a light out or whatever, then you'll just come out and take care of it without an additional trip charge or anything like that. So yeah. And, and, and as far as pricing goes, obviously that's completely up to you. How do I want to price the system? Do you want to do per hour visits? You want to do per fixture visits per transformer? You know, some people do it by feel there's no right or wrong. All I know is that with maintenance, here's your, here's your key to maintenance. You got to make enough money so that you can go back if you need to, to service the system properly, charge enough so that you can do it right. That's what I could say about maintenance. I don't care if that's $300 a visit, $500 a visit, or if it's a, you know, a hundred dollars a visit, charge enough so that you can do it right and actually justify going back out if you need to, because something got missed. You know, if you're charging someone for maintenance and you're going out every six months and you were there doing a call and then three weeks later, one of their LEDs went out. Well, you got to get back out there and fix that, fix that problem. Well, you had to have made enough money on the prior visit to be able to justify and afford to be able to go back. So charge more, charge enough, whatever it takes to be profitable and spend enough time giving that white glove service through maintenance, whether it's a hundred bucks an hour, 500 bucks an hour, whatever it is. Yeah. And make sure you track it as well, because what we, you know, you like, we would do the analytics every year and find out our like top 10 clients and our top worst clients. I mean, there's some people that like that model doesn't work for us. Like, okay, we went out like 53 times, so you're not going to make any money at that. So then you can decide to fire that client or raise the price and let them fire themselves or, you know, whatever it is. So, uh, I can't remember. I, I can't remember how the phrase, but basically, the more the more you track, the more you can actually know what you're doing, and then you can adjust based on that. So, and you just track that with good technology, a good CRM. You know, a lot of stuff we discussed last last month. Yeah, Rebecca, the station it's a uh, uh, Turfs Up Radio. So TurfsUpRadio.com. It's a uh, internet, so it's not like ninety eight point six or whatever. Uh, TurfsUpRadio.com. You can download the app or. Like I said, you can just listen there. Um, I am also going to be trying to stream all this stuff live. I ran into a problem yesterday trying to stream to my Facebook page at Ryan Lee Live or Landscape Lighting Secrets on YouTube. Uh, but the problem is I was at, at was I was live. I was doing some ACDC and uh, some uh, uh, Weezer, some music and stuff like that. And they, they flagged me for uh, whatever it's called, copyright infringement. Who cares? It's just I just broke the law. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not gonna we're not gonna need any of that stuff next week because I'm fired up and uh, I, I apparently I'm gonna bite into some people like without using the f bomb. Okay, is that no possible? Problem. Can you can you? I, I, we're, there's only one way to find out, right? <laughs> you did good today. <laughs> is there any Thank other you. questions that you guys have? We'll give you just a second. If not, I'll promote Lighting Boss and Landscape Lighting Secrets. I know uh, Ryan's working on a lot of new things with his business, with new uh, manufacturers, and uh, he's got his new distribution place and all that. So make sure you check him out. Um, if you have any questions, he's super accessible, uh, easy to work with. So highly, highly recommend doing that. Of course, Landscape Lighting Secrets is my coaching business for the landscape lighting industry. So if you need help starting, growing, or scaling your landscape lighting business or division. If you want to start a lighting division, if you're just a landscaper or Christmas light guy, that's, that's what I help with. So. Yeah. And what Ryan does that, that I love is the key to hold his program success is that he holds you accountable. And that's what so many of us need. We need somebody to hold us accountable. We have plenty of things that we want to do with our business, but who's forcing us to do that. Who's forcing us to get better 
who's holding us accountable. And that that's what he does. And that's re really the beauty of his program. Um, Jim, Jim just asked if we could send out the slides. Yeah, I don't have a problem. You got a problem sending out these slides, right? Um, no, that should be fine. I'll, um, you know, I'll send out the recording anyway. And uh, I think I can, I'll just put it in like a, a link right to my uh, Google Drive or something like yeah, that. Yeah, either that or just a, our 10, 12 step, our, our uh, 12, 10 step program. Yeah, whatever it is. We still don't even know. And we went and we finished it. So I feel pretty accomplished. Is it Nailed a 12 it. or a 10 step program? Who cares? <laughs> do them. Just do the steps. However many steps there are, follow the steps. You want to add your own steps? Is there something we missed? There might be. Make it 13. It, it, it could be a 15, 20 step step process there could obviously there are things in there that you guys can continue to do to add value and that's what we're trying to do to help you add value to your clientele so you can get the biggest possible check out there you want to be getting a bigger check than everybody else in your area and you want your clients or your prospects begging you to take their money all we're doing is trying to add value to the process so that can happen Okay, I don't see any other questions. Right. So, guys, really, really appreciate your support. Thanks for jumping on here. And uh, just like I said, I'm really grateful that you guys will take the time to do this. I know your time is valuable. So, thanks for being on here. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks, Ryan. All right. Thanks, Jason. See you, man. Bye, everybody. See you guys.